Did you know that version 3 of Angular was never actually released? We went straight from the initial v2 release to v4. And now we're at version 13, but just 11 days ago, Angular 3 was released. Although this is a fun little coincidence, Angular 3 doesn't have anything to do with the long lost version of Angular. It's a new library built by Narwhal Engineer and Angular GDE Chow Tran to help Angular developers use the 3.js library in their apps in a more declarative way. So 3.js is a library that helps you use WebGL to create 3D scenes in JavaScript, and Angular 3 is a library that helps you use 3.js in Angular. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Angular 3, or NGT for short, to add a reactive 3D cube to a login screen. This will just be a simple introductory example, but make sure to stick around until later in the video because I'm going to show you more of our little robot friend here later. Okay, so here is the simple example I built. This animated cube reacts to the state of the login form. There are four states in total, pending, which means nothing has happened yet, authenticating, which means that a login attempt is in progress, and there are also success and failure states. So if I try to log in, you'll see that the cube begins rotating faster, and when the login succeeds, it will turn green. But I've also set it up so that if I use the username fail, it's going to fail the login attempt, and you'll see the same thing, it spins for a little bit, but then it's going to turn red. Adding a 3D experience like this to an application can make it more fun, engaging, and it certainly makes it more interesting. And this is something that we can do already with 3.js, the beautiful part of NGT or Angular 3 is the way in which we add it to the application. We can do this in a fully declarative or reactive way, and Angular 3 is going to make that a lot easier for us. So let's take a quick look at this code here. So I'll link to installation instructions in the description. Uh, although Angular 3 is stable now, it is still quite new, so the installation steps might change. So at this point in this code base, let's just assume that Angular 3 is already installed. So this is my login cube component that is responsible for displaying the cube. And we can build up a 3D scene just by dropping in these NGT directives. So the entire scene, which actually takes up the whole page, is wrapped in this NGT canvas. And then we can add whatever other NGT things inside of that canvas that we want. So in this case, you can see that we have some lighting set up to uh, illuminate certain faces of the cube as it spins around. And then we just have a simple box geometry to create the cube itself. And we are also doing a couple other things of here, like controlling the position on the mesh. And we are also animating it, which I'll talk about in just a moment as well. So building out a scene like this will require some knowledge of how to use 3.js in general, or at least what exists in 3.js. But the basic idea is that for every concept in 3.js, like uh, shapes, lights, uh, camera, meshes, uh, things like that, there is going to be an equivalent mapping in Angular 3 that we can use. So all we need to do is drop in the directive that we want to use in the template. And we also just need to make sure that we are importing the module for that directive in our module file as well. So we can create a 3D scene just by dropping in various you know, shapes and meshes into our canvas here. But you can see we are also animating this cube. And to do that, we just hook into this animate ready event and then we are triggering an onAnimate method, which we define in our class here. So we could use this to create just a static animation, but I also want this to react uh, dynamically based on the input to the component. And you can see here that I'm setting the X and Y rotation to a variable. So to achieve this, all I'm doing is passing in the state of the form as an input to this app login cube component and then whenever that input changes, I'm just changing the variables in this file here. And that's going to affect both the color of the cube and the speed that it's rotating. And these values that are being passed in for the input are provided by the async pipe, which is subscribing to an observable stream of the state of the form, which is what makes this whole thing fully reactive as opposed to coding this imperatively. And I'm actually using NGRX component store here to manage a local state, uh, but that's another topic. So uh, leave a comment below if you would like to see another video on component store specifically. The important part for this tutorial is that it is providing us with a stream of values 
indicating the state of the login form pending authenticating success or fail. And we are then passing that through to our component. So that's the basics of creating and animating a 3D scene with Angular 3. Obviously there's a lot more to learn there, but hopefully it, it paints a bit of a picture for you as to what it would look like. But now let's move on to the cool part. Let's get back to our little robot friend here. So when I showed my simple example to Chow, he offered to send a pull request to add in some more complex Angular 3 features to show off in the video. I of course readily accepted and the result is equal parts adorable and awesome. So this is the same basic idea as before, but instead of a simple cube, we now have this cute little animated robot. And so this robot has a range of animations that can be triggered. So if I attempt to log in, the robot is going to start running and when it succeeds, it gives us a little thumbs up. But if the login fails, the robot's life will abruptly be terminated. So there are a range of other expressions the, the robot has. So I'll link to the docs in the description where you can play around with this uh, yourself and you can sort of see how he reacts to certain uh, inputs. So I'm not going to walk through the code for this in this video because it is considerably more uh, complex than the one I just showed you and I want to keep this video simple. But if we have a scroll through, we can see, sort of see the, uh, you know, different things that are required to make this work. And if we take a look at the template as well, we can see there are a few more uh, NGT directives being used to create this. But although this is considerably more complex, it is still a relatively small amount of code for what we're actually getting out of it. And more importantly than the amount of code that is here is the way in which Angular 3 allows us to code the style of our code and that we can actually do this in a declarative way. So if you do want to browse through this code yourself, the source code will be in the description. So feel free to clone it, have a play around and see what you can learn from it. So Chow has done an incredible job with this library and has built it from scratch so that Angular developers could have a powerful 3D Angular library to use, just like the React ecosystem has in React 3 Fiber. So if you find this interesting, feel free to get involved, uh, give it a try. And if you feel like contributing yourself, Chow is very open to pull requests of all kinds. A great place to start is just converting examples from the 3JS documentation into Angular 3. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe and go subscribe to Chow because he is constantly putting out insanely high quality code on his streams. And I will see you in the next video.